was God's plan. God had a vision. And you can see it in Psalm 22 where he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he talks about these things. He said, The, the, the bulls of Bashan are beset me round about. I'm compassed with the wicked. And he talks all about how they pierced him and all those things in Psalm 22. God had this thing all written out. He did not leave it to a per chance this is going to happen. It happened just like he said. As Isaiah 53 would say, there was no beauty in which to desire him. But he was willing to cry our transgression to his bruise for our iniquities and chastise our peace was upon him by a stripe for evil. All we like sheep have gone astray we turned everyone in his own way the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Hmm. He did not leave it to something that was going to be chalked up to memory, and he has a perfect memory. And yet God said, write down the vision. There's a purpose for vision. Write it out. I do not just see the scribing. But I see the simplicity. Write it plainly. Write it plainly. Now some people think that this means to write it in large letters. In large letters. So that those who are running can read it. That is not what the scripture says. But I, I studied this thing out. And when I read that, now here's what I did. <laughs> what kind of God got that idea? But here's what it says. He said, where's it going? Yeah. Write it, make it plain upon tables that he may run at that reading. Not that he can read it while he's running, but that he might run and tell somebody that he might be a runner, one who runs, runs to God, runs from God, or from, from wrath, and runs to go tell others. Right, right. Make it plain. Simple in clarity. It bothers me when people have something to say or they say they have something to say and they spend 20 minutes saying something that leaves you wondering what they mean. <laughs> Be clear with the vision. If God's giving you a vision, He's going to give it to you plainly. Write it out plainly. Yes sir. yes, sir. Don't try to make it bigger than what God says. Yes, sir. Don't try to beautify it to make it sound elegant. Just say what God says. Be clear. And be concise. That's one of the reasons I don't use many illustrations when I'm preaching. One of that reasons is because a 45 minute message would turn into an hour and a half if I use all my illustrations. <laughs> and let me say, it's hard for some of us to stay awake for 45 minutes in my preaching. <laughs> I did not say some of you, I said some of us. Amen. There's times I put myself to sleep in my preaching. <laughs> And write in the vision, say what needs to be said. Yes, sir. Don't add the extras. Details are important. But over explaining can be detrimental. Details are important. But over explaining can be detrimental. If you speak too much, you will get people off track. Think about it like this. When a runner or a preacher is sharing a vision, it must be clear enough to understand. But it must be concise enough to not overwhelm. Clear enough to understand but concise enough not to overwhelm. 
The vision should be scribed. The vision should be simple. The vision should be sure. That he may run that reading. If I were to ask you the vision for Victorious Life Baptist Church, could you tell me the vision for Victorious Life Baptist Church? If someone were to ask you what your reason for being in church was, what would your answer be? Has God given you a vision for missions? Has God given you a vision for ministry? Has God given you a vision? I remember hearing a young man who said he was called to be a missionary to Mexico. And we were at a preacher's meeting during a missions conference. He was asked to speak for 30 minutes. We're at a missions conference. We're at a preacher's fellowship. So he introduced himself and spent 40 plus minutes preaching and trying to teach on courtship. Courtship. A word that is not even in the Bible. Principles that are. But that's a different thing. He did not deal with a vision of God dealing with him about missions. He did not deal with a vision about God doing a work in his heart and in his life that these pastors would see that he's got a burden. He dealt with courtship and not for 30 minutes, but 30 or 40 plus minutes. Cutting away the time for the last preacher. And the last preacher has a hard time with 30 minutes. Do not believe that. So at lunch, the pastor asked me to talk to the young man about his presentation and his preaching. Because I was around and I was a little bit older than some of these guys. I've been around a while. I did. I explained to him, first thing I asked him, he says, why do you preach on courtship? I think every one of these pastors is married. They're not cool. I said, there were not, uh, it was, uh, this is not a youth revival. Why would you preach? He said, what's the message of God? And I said, I thought your message was a vision for souls in Mexico. And how the Savior wants to win and reach the world with the gospel. He says, well, we talk. And it didn't sink in. Because I heard from Brother... Bruce and from Brother Chip both that they had been in missions conference with him and he got up to present his work and was asked to preach and you know what he preached on? Of course. <laughs> and nobody none could understand why the young man after six months of deputation could not raise support from even from any place but his home church. I think he had three supporting churches when it was six months later. He could not present his vision. Yep. You make it clear and concise so that it can be shared. Now the three other missionaries that were at the conference, that conference, all three of us were invited to other churches by pastors because of after we presented our work. Two of them presented their field. And I just got up. I had 25 minutes or 20 minutes. I just got up and preached. I said, I'm going to preach to you what I preach in prison and preach to them Jesus. And we had a good time. Oh, I think I preached 25 because they got to shout and woo. There was no pouting and there was no doubt. We were happy as hogs in mud. Ready, we were ready to go to lunch when I got done. I mean, it was good. 
But he couldn't figure out why none of the pastors were asking him to come present his work. Because he had no vision. In closing, let me give you this. There is a preparation for receiving a vision. There is a place for receiving a vision. There are procedures for receiving a vision. And there is a purpose for receiving a vision. I'll say it again. It is not that you might be lifted up like a fly. He that is lifted up is not upright. The soul that is lifted up is not upright in him. But it is so you can learn the vision. So that you can love the vision. And so that you can live within the vision. Laboring together with God so that we can fulfill all His will. Dear ones, what is your vision? Why do you not have a vision? Do you want a vision? Now I am going to be gone for this week. I am going to ask you to do some homework. Homework. This is not Sunday school, but I'm going to ask you to do homework anyway. I want you to get with God and I want you to be able to write down what you believe the vision for this church should be. And ask God to give you a vision. And God, ask God to give you details of how you can be part of fulfilling that vision. What can we do to fulfill the vision? Now my vision is not 157 people. I do not believe we can handle 157 people in this auditorium. I'd like to try. <laughs> but I do not think it's going to be. But what I do know is I have a great vision for growth. but not just for growth's sake. What is your vision? What's your vision for your life? What do you believe God wants you to do with your life? Get a vision and go on with God. I believe we looked at today that thought that we looked at how to receive it about receiving the vision. So now, let's do the duty thereof. If we're not going to do anything about what we hear, then what good is it? What good is it to hear the word of God and to only be hearers of Be doers of the word, not hearers of the word. your own soul. For if any man be not a doer of the word, is that not what it says, brother here? If any man be not a doer of the word, you look up the rest of it. That's in the book of James, is it not, brother Gary? Brother Gary preached on that. Remember that? Yes, sir. It's the James. But it's deceptive to not be a doer of the word. You need to be a doer of the word. And that's where the road needs to run. That's it. Come on. Because there's a lot of hearers. Hearers. They listen, but they don't love it, and they don't get it. Are you going to live what you've learned?
Father, again, I thank you for today.